cold cases are often exceptionally intriguing because of the air of mystery surrounding them. But it's important we talk about them because any new light on these cases might possibly end in some leads for the authorities being brought forth. Let's dive right into these long prevailing mysteries as we cover the top 10 mysterious cold cases that remain unsolved. Also, this goes without saying, but these are in no particular order because, well, how do you rank something like that, you know? All right. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Henry Baltimore Jr. In 1973, Henry was a 21 year old honor student at the University of Michigan who had a very promising future ahead of him. In March of that year, Henry was unfortunately attacked inside of his apartment. Two men broke in and tied him to the bed before stealing both money and material items. Henry was reluctant to report this incident to the police, but did end up doing so. After this, a suspect named Roy Davis was arrested and charged with armed robbery, and Henry was scheduled scheduled to testify at his hearing, but never showed up. Two days after the hearing, Henry did resurface and asked the prosecutors to drop the charges because he was frightened, but they refused and Henry was rescheduled to testify. Two days before this rescheduled hearing, Henry ended up disappearing very suspiciously. Originally, people believed that he may have gone into hiding considering how vocal he was about being frightened, but that belief quickly went away and people began to suspect something a lot more sinister was at play. Henry's family especially knew something was wrong because there was no way that he would disappear without telling at least one of them. Without Henry and his testimony, Roy ended up taking a plea deal and only was sentenced to six weeks. Roy was, of course, considered a person of interest in Henry's disappearance, and a neighbor of Henry's even said that they saw Roy and another man knocking on Henry's door the day he disappeared, but Roy's mother offered her son an alibi. Roy has never been formally charged for the disappearance. The two theories of what happened to Henry are either that someone abducted and took the life of Henry to prevent him from testing Justifying, or Henry left Michigan, changed his identity, and assumed a new name. You would have hoped if it was the latter, he would have at least told one of his family members. His case remains open almost 50 years later, and who knows? If someone out there who's watching this video knows something about this case, please call in and give any and all information over to the authorities. The remaining family members of Henry deserve to know what happened to this extremely bright young man. In our number nine spot today, we have Cody James and Gary Harker. Cody James and Gary Harker were longtime friends who were working together on on Christmas Day in 1979 in Moline, Illinois. They left Cody's shop to head out in the truck to deliver an air compressor to Rock Island, Illinois, and then head to pick up a $500 payment for it in Davenport, Iowa, which they never made it to. The black truck they were driving was found almost two months after they had gone missing and subsequently was put up for auction after not being claimed for 40 days. The bodies of Cody and Gary were found in the truck bed by the men who ended up purchasing it. 25 years after their deaths, the case was still unsolved solved, and a friend of Cody and Gary brought police a roll of film that they had been entrusted to by the men. When Cody and Gary gave their friend this film all those years earlier, they said, quote, if anything happens to us, develop this film. It is crazy to think that this friend waited 25 years to spill this tea, and that perhaps the men knew what was going to happen to them. Unfortunately, the film didn't end up giving police any solid leads, although the case continues to be investigated. In our number 8 spot today, we have Christopher Christopher Wallace, also known as the Notorious B.I.G. Christopher Wallace is much better known by his alias, and he was one of the most famous rappers of the 1990s. And even though he was just getting his start, he is considered one of the best rappers of all time. Biggie was a New York rapper, but he was unfortunately killed in March of 1997 after a drive-by shooting while he was in Los Angeles. In 1996, the tensions between the East and West Coast hip-hop and rap scenes were rising, and after the death of Tupac in Las Vegas, rumors began to swirl about Biggie and his possible involvement in that killing. Unfortunately, the people who killed Biggie have never been found, and that is where the mystery comes in. There are a lot of similarities between the killings of Big and Tupac, and since neither of them are solved, there are so many rumors about what exactly happened. Some theories span from a gang member with financial motives to a planned hit by a record company in order to boost sales. There is so much speculation and so many possibilities surrounding this, and I really hope that one day we find out who committed this unbelievable crime. Notorious B.I.G. was only able to release one album before his death, but had three albums released posthumously, with the first one achieving a diamond certification in the U.S. In our number seven spot today, we have Elizabeth Short, or The Black Dahlia. This is one of the most famous cold cases ever, and that is because it is horrifying, extremely dark, and super mysterious. Elizabeth Short was an aspiring actor, but her life was cut tragically short by an incredibly inhumane act. 
Elizabeth's body was found when she was only 22 years old in a vacant lot near a park in Los Angeles in January of 1947. The crime was highly publicized because of how graphic it was, but whoever did this was sure to leave little to no evidence behind. A few days after the crime, someone claiming to be the person who committed this crime called to say that he would eventually turn himself in, but wanted police to search for a while. But he also said he would send in some of Beth Short's belongings. He did follow through on this and did send in things, such as her birth certificate, but this didn't end up giving investigators any leads. During the initial investigation, 60 different men confessed to this crime, and since then there have now been over 500 confessions, which is absolutely insane. There are honestly too many theories on this one to even get into right now, and it is quite possible that we may never know what exactly happened to Elizabeth. In our number 6 spot today we have Jill Dando. Jill was an English journalist and a television presenter until she was killed outside of her southwest London home in 1999. This created the biggest manhunt the country had ever seen since the Yorkshire Ripper in the 70s. A man named Barry George was originally convicted and sentenced to prison for this terrible crime, but he ended up actually being acquitted years later, which now leaves this case unsolved. Jill's next door neighbor heard a surprised gasp from Jill, but he never heard like a shot, and it sounded more like someone who was greeting an old friend. The same neighbor looked out the window and actually saw whoever the killer is, but of course at the time they didn't know who he was or what had just happened, and he also didn't recognize recognized the man, so unfortunately he was unable to give an identification. There are a ton of speculations and rumors about who took Jill's life, and it ranges from a potential stalker to maybe even like a crazy hit job. Hopefully one day there will be answers on why someone would have done something so horrible to Jill. In our number 5 spot today we have Patricia Meehan. This is a story that really just gives me the chills because the circumstances surrounding it are exceptionally strange. On April 20th, 1989, Patricia Bernadette Meehan was in a car accident on Highway 200 near Circle, Montana. Witnesses saw her driving her car on the wrong side of the road, which then led to her crashing into off-duty police dispatcher Carol Heights. Carol was luckily uninjured in the crash, and she got out of her vehicle right away. Upon exiting her vehicle, Carol saw Patricia also exit her vehicle, walk up to her, and just stare at her, without saying a word. Patricia then walked away, climbed over a fence, and then stood staring at the accident before before walking away and disappearing, which like literally just talking about it gives me goosebumps. It is so strange. A search began immediately but turned up little results. There have been thousands of reported sightings of Patricia that have potentially given police leads to her whereabouts, but she still has never been found. In our number 4 spot today we have the Mary Celeste. The Mary Celeste first set sail on November 17th, 1872 with a cargo full of alcohol. Whatever happened over the next month isn't quite clear, but what we do know is that on the afternoon of December 5th of the same year, another ship on the Atlantic crossing found her drifting somewhere between Azores and Portugal. The captain of this ship knew the captain of the Mary Celeste and knew that he was a skilled and capable sailor, so he was extremely suspicious. He ordered a crew to board the Mary Celeste, and when they did, they found that the ship had been deserted, but it was in full seaworthy condition, so why had they abandoned it? Especially the captain. The captain of the ship that found the derelict split his crew and sailed the Mary Celeste to Gibraltar for more investigations, but despite this, the captain, his family, and the crew of seven that were on board the Mary Celeste simply just disappeared, and no one knows what happened or where they could have gone. I think this one is so famous because it seemingly just has no answers tied to it at all. Like, it really is just one of those mysteries with next to nothing to go off in terms of any sort of clues. In our number three spot today, we have the Yuba County Five. On February 24th, 1978, five men from Yuba City, California, attended a basketball game at California State University. All five men went missing after this night, and several days later, the group's car was found abandoned in a remote area of the Plumas National Forest that was way way, way out of the way from where they should have been. There was no reason for the car to have been abandoned because it was in totally fine working condition when it was found. In June of 1978, four of the men were found passed away near a trailer camp that is deep in the forest, but the fifth man has never been found. There is a lot of strange information about this case, such as how one of the men starved to death even though he was surrounded by food. There is truly too much to cover about this story that I unfortunately don't have time for, but if you're interested I would highly highly recommend looking it up because this case is 
truly unexplainable and absolutely terrifying. In our number two spot today, we have Jim Gray. Jim Gray was an incredibly important computer scientist who was responsible for many computer advancements that changed things for all of us. Other than being a computer scientist, he was also a really experienced and skilled sailor. And one day, on January 28th, 2007, he set sail for a short trip so he could head out and spread his mother's ashes as she had recently passed away. As his trip began, Jim spoke to his wife on the phone and said he would give her a call once he got back in range. After their phone call, he called his daughter as well and left a little message for her and that was when he was off on his trip, but unfortunately he never ended up returning. Jim's wife Donna was the one who raised the alarm bells as she was away on a trip, but like I mentioned, Jim said he would call her later, and he never did. At this point is when huge searches began. Thousands of images of the area where Jim or his boat might be were uploaded to the Amazon Mechanical Turk for people to look through and see if they could find any kind of signs, but to no avail. Jim also had an automatic emergency position indicating beacon on his ship, but whatever happened to Jim and the ship clearly didn't meet the requirements, or perhaps it had some sort of malfunction, or maybe it was even turned off. To this day, no one knows what happened to Jim or his boat, as no sign or trace of either has ever been found. The theories of what may have happened are endless, and range from Jim intentionally disappearing, to him being kidnapped for his computer skills and brain in order to do some kind of inside job, and everything in between. There most definitely are theories that are seemingly more likely than others, but at the end of the day, they are all a possibility. In our number one spot today, we have Moro de Moro. Moro was an Italian investigative journalist, and it is said that his profession is most likely what led to his disappearance. On the evening of September 16th, 1970, he was coming back home from work, but never actually returned. Before his disappearance, he apparently was convinced that he had the story of a lifetime, and he even had told his co-workers that he had a story that was going to shake Italy. There are three main speculations and theories about what this story might have been and what could have happened. One theory is that the story could have been related to the death of a man named Enrico, who is the president of Italy's state-owned oil and gas conglomerate, ENI. The next was that his story could have been about finding a drug trafficking network between Sicily and the United States. And the final theory is that his disappearance might have been related to a failed right-wing coup that took place in the 70s. Despite extensive searches, he has never been found. And in fact, two of the main detectives who started this case both had their lives taken by the mafia. It is believed that Mora was a victim of what is called Lupara Bianca, which is a journalistic term for when the mafia takes the life of someone in such a way that their body will never be found. Whatever story he was working on, we'll likely never know, and it's such a tragedy that a job he was so passionate about is most likely what led to his disappearance. Alright guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I will see you again soon. Bye!